All right, the next mechanic we're unlocking is on-car dribbling. Dribbling the ball in Rocket League is more challenging than in a real sport like soccer or football for people from countries who haven't been to the moon. In soccer, you have two feet that can sort of straddle the ball, so moving it back and forth is straightforward. Keep the ball between your feet. In Rocket League, however, in order to move the ball from side to side, you need to maneuver your entire car around the ball, which takes time and boost. On-car dribbling has the advantage of not needing to move your car as far laterally relative to the ball in order to change its direction. Dribbling like this can give you several options to outplay your opponent. First, you can drop the ball in front of you and dribble normally, or you can go for a 50-50. Second, you can start a bounce dribble, which allows you to reposition your car while remaining threatening the whole time. That can prevent your opponent from knowing when to commit. Third, you can utilize one of many flicks that can catch the goalie off guard. Finally, you can pop the ball up over the opponent and even start an air dribble if you have the mechanics to do so. Like every mechanic, there are risks when dribbling the ball on top of your car. The first one that comes to mind is visibility. If you can't see your opponent, you can't be sure if or when they're challenging. You also run the risk of losing control and overcommitting while your opponent has time to turn it around and progress the ball to your half. It can be difficult to predict and there's a chance they could tee it off of your head for a banger into your own net. There are a couple ways you can start an on-car dribble. First, if the ball isn't moving or if it's rolling towards you, you can drive into the ball while turning into it slightly. This will pop the ball up and allow you an opportunity to position underneath the ball. If the ball is rolling away from you, it's more difficult to get the ball to pop up into the air without hitting it too far away from you. In these cases, you can cut into the ball harder or you can decide to play the ball differently. Second, if the ball is already in the air, you can position underneath it. However, this method is more precise and might take a while to get used to. This requires an almost soft touch while not allowing the ball to bounce too far away so you can maintain possession. In training, you can press up on your controller to have the ball spawn on your hood. This method is great for getting quick repetitions, but don't forget to practice getting the ball up once you can carry the ball for a few seconds. Unfortunately, if you're a console player, you don't have access to the best way to practice dribbling. Your best bet is to use free play and try to dribble the ball around the pitch as long as possible, which is still a great method. The best method, however, is to practice on custom dribble challenge maps. In my opinion, Dribble Challenge 2 Overhaul is the best dribble challenge map until you get pretty advanced. Dribbling is pretty straightforward to understand, but takes a lot of repetitions to get the muscle memory. Over the course of this next episode, we will give more in-depth explanations. However, I want to give a couple tips to get you started. First off, make sure that you're always practicing your dribbling with ball cam off. If you drive a little bit too far under the ball, it's going to have your camera turn all the way around and you're going to get disoriented. So you primarily want to keep ball cam off while you're practicing dribbling until you get better. Whenever you're dribbling, it's important to think of your car as the hitbox because that's what's actually interacting with the ball. If it's balancing on top of your hitbox and you're moving with the ball, it's not going to move very far. If it's on the edge of your hitbox, you need to start making corrections or else it'll fall off. Learning how to dribble in Rocket League is a lot like learning how to ride a bike in real life. If you go too slow, it's a lot easier to fail. Make sure that you have a decent pace, but don't go too fast because the ball can go faster than your car and you won't be able to catch up. It's a balancing act, you just have to get used to it. Pay attention to the ball indicator circle and keep your car inside that circle. I tend to drop the ball in front of my car more than anything, which ruins your dribble and forces you to change plans. If you're like me, you need to be positioned farther under the ball than you might expect. The last tip for this tutorial is to keep your eye on the ball, for the most part. Learn how the ball rotates and how to react to its rotation while you dribble. Finally, this isn't a full length tutorial, so you can tune in next episode to get more tips and explanations. That's going to be it for week one. Thanks for sticking with it through the end. And if you enjoyed this, please don't forget you can like and subscribe. You can hit that bell. It really helps me out. I'm a fairly new content creator, and I'm really trying to put out good quality content from the get-go. So if you could help me out, that'd be awesome. And once again, if you want to get involved, feel free to join our Discord or catch me on Twitch and hang out.